basically you're going through the same motions as your father. And you feel your heart harden when you think about what was done there. And you become more resolute in your determination to go back. And that's our adventure for for tonight. So, um, as far as things go, right. we got about thirty-ish minutes. So, everyone gets to be level five. Dark ending. Yay! Literally, with the the night sky being yeah. all awry and shit like that. Yeah. Um, but I didn't die. But no one died. That's what you think. That's all you can ask for. Yeah. Um, so let's see here. Excuse me. Um, who's the lowest? It's probably gonna be Valium or... It's, it's definitely gonna be Nate. 3741. Nope. Oh, um, darn it! I, I don't think yeah, because I don't think she usually gets a lot of uh roleplay XP. Yeah, she which... doesn't do a lot of roleplay. Neither does yeah. Nate though. Oh, god damn it! John said that. Yeah, oh, you heard we my neck. Talking... Yeah. yeah, we all heard that. You are dead now. <laughs> no, it's just an owl. <laughs> If Kiro became level five, yeah. right at the fucking beginning. There we go, level five, six five zero zero. Holy shit, you are remotely close. Oh, Everyone yeah. gets 2,759 XP. What? <laughs> I got it. 2,759? 2, yep. Yep. Dear God. Alright. So I have 7432. Darn it, you're still ahead of me. <laughs> Six fifty-seven. Both ahead of me. Ah, fuck you. <laughs> That's what happens when I miss one session. I miss one session, everything goes to hell. <laughs> Pretty much. I've missed, uh, I think only one, really. Yeah, and I think that one we did something else, right? Yeah. Oh, so did I, did I only miss a one-shot? Yeah, you missed the one-shot. Then... No, I must have missed a real one, because I'm way behind Jay. I'm like 300 behind Jay. That wouldn't be uh, just from role playing. That's only two to three ticks. Oh, role playing gets you... Oh, yeah, I forgot. Every time we level up, role playing gives you more XP. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was still thinking it was uh, only like 50 a tick. Yeah, no. Okay, so leveling up also adjusts hit points, right? Yes. So you get hit points, you get new abilities and stuff. Your proficiency bonus bumps to three. Yeah, proficiency goes up to three now. Oh, yeah. Um, so hit points I gain, what, the average plus my constitution modifier. Plus, so I gain nine more hit points. I think I now have as many hit points as Thorgil just had. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still have like nothing, so don't worry. Um. Yeah, because Fighter at level five gets an extra attack, and that is all. That's pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah, it's fantastic. Are you kidding? I've and that's not even what I'm waiting for. I, I the thing I need is the thing I get at level seven. <laughs> that's the real one I need. 
That's pretty good, considering we're going to be moving up the ranks faster. Especially because ultimately that means that, like, Zach can do... Do you have a attack cantrip that's a bonus action, Zach? That's what I need level 7 for! Level 7, there we go. That, that's uh, really So cool. at level 7, you'll be able to attack three times in a turn. Uh, I mean, no, no, I can attack three times a turn right now, technically, because I have my attack, my extra attack, and my bonus action. Yeah. It's yeah, just, it's action. just, I legitimately just can just double tap my, my pistol, and that's about it. Oh. Because I... <laughs> yeah. Or if I'm in melee range, I get, like, you know, three slashes, or two sla like, as many bites as I want, pretty much. Well, ideally, yeah, it, it's fire twice, move slash or bite in a round and then basically that that optimizes it but then the problem that Zach runs to, into is, is if he wants to do range again he'd have to extricate himself so then he's stuck in melee range doing three uh, three attacks a turn can where you get at a level 7 he could do ranged attacks with spells too well, well, yeah. isn't there a feat called like crossbow expert or something where you can uh, do ranged attacks from melee without a not for pistols. There's nothing. There's nothing in the book for pistols for extra feats. Yeah, so, but pistols don't exist, right? So if, if, if a feat time. says, if a feat says crossbow, I feel like it's not too unreasonable. Yeah, but if it's for... a crossbow, then it would just be crossbow. If it said ranged weapons, there would be a case because there's still throwing axes, daggers, bows. Uh, well, what I'm saying is that if his pistol yeah, is fire and reload, mechanically, it's very similar to a crossbow. Yeah, but it, it doesn't actually. Mean it. It's more like more like a bow, just one-handed. It's like, a, think of it more like a hand crossbow than anything else. It just uses gunpowder instead of a bolt quarrel. What page are feats on? I'm looking for it now. It's like 50 or 76, I think. Somewhere are around that region. only taken when you get a ability up? Correct. Instead of taking ability oh, up, you can do a feat. But he hasn't technically hit five yet, so when he hit the point where he got his, he could go back. Yeah, you guys it. could change anything. Basically, what well, like basically, you guys have hit level five. So next the, week is it, where everything is solidified. Well, well, here's the question. I I assume you guys want to continue doing D and D because normally I put it up. We finished our main plot. If you guys wanted to change rule sets and you're like, you know what, John, I love D and D, but I'd like to do something different. That's what we're going to talk about now. Like, are you guys wanting to keep going on with the story to see where some of the other characters' storylines went? Do you want to try something different? I mean, we could do a Cthulhu-oriented universe if you wanted a horror and mystery. We could do a zombie apocalypse, you know, game. We could do something like that, not Pokemon. Zach? Um, <laughs> No, I want to. I want to keep doing D and D. I like Chaos Gates a lot. I would be happy to go back to that, but um, I like D and D. Yeah. Because um, I mean, the thing that I said is, is that if we went back to Chaos Gate, I would be able to put it into yeah. Cypher System. So I'm, I'm happy with D and D. So easy. It behooves the the world building so much I, easier. I kind of like the uh, Fantasy Age, but just because of the combat stunts, I thought those are really cool. It is it is a very cool mechanic, but that's the only good thing about that entire fucking system. Yeah, other than was, that, I would say it was lackluster. But that was, was really that cool. Level. Especially yeah. because that game was so combat-focused. All the trip sixes, all the time. Yeah. Uh, crossbow expert. Being within five feet of a hostile creature does not impose disadvantage on ranged attack rolls. There you go. So I should consider that. I didn't. I didn't think about that. Yeah. So you can totally take that, and then basically you can be, you can wield like, you know, a, a, a saber or something, and you could basically be the, the a pirate with a pistol in one hand. And <laughs> that's what I've been doing for the most part, right? Here. That's what I've been. That's what I've been doing because I can't. I don't have a second gun. Yeah. Or. You go and you visit Gaznig and you get a second gun. I have 600 gold! That's what I've been, like, hoarding it for, so I can get a second one! And don't forget to make gunpowder. Well, don't forget, Zach, the, the other thing is, is that there are other guns you can get. 
too. Mm -hmm. Like you don't just have to have a pistol. Yeah, I know. So oh, I know. There's there's the rifle. There's the flippin' There's a. Sh I think there's a shotgun in there. There's a hand mortar. A one-handed practically grenade launcher. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I know I've got it. Actually, let's... we gotta learn how to make you uh, gunpowder too. That's my goal. That's why I bought all those glass jars and ball bearings. I plan on making some homemade uh... explosives. Yeah, I want to make some grenades as soon as we can learn how to make gunpowder. It's funny. Oh, an M79 grenade launcher is essentially what it is. <laughs> yeah. The last two minutes would have all of us in prison if somebody didn't know we were talking about. Uh... Yeah. That's why I have all those glass jars and ball bearings. <laughs> okay. So, um, with that being said, my next question is, is, is I have set up, at least in my mind... leading you guys but I, I, let me let me put it like this I kind of railroaded you guys a little bit during our campaign I mean I kind of like I'm like you should go here and then you guys went there and I'm like this is where you need to go this is where I'm hiring and like so I, I've slowly I, I always left it open to how you wanted to deal with something and I think that was like my one like saving grace to like make my brain not say that I'm railroading you but how much sandbox do you want to go? Do you feel that, like, what I did was good as far as, like, you told us kind of what the journey was, but you let us discern how the journey played out? Or do you want it to be more real, roadie? Or do you want me to just go, like, full sandbox and you guys go, I really want to see what's at Hammer Spine, Hammer Spine Post. I mean, I, I, I was kind of upset because every time we wanted, I, I was thinking, we should get out of here. It was like, but we can't because this happened and there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> well, I, to be fair, like, like, the, like, going and wanting to speak to Latia and all that, like, like, Latia existed because I, I had to flesh out the Ironwood because you guys were there, so I knew everything that happened in the Ironwood. But, like, you guys agreed to the, the fucking thing. You could have been like, nope, not fucking signing my life away. I'm not... And which yeah, totally would have cut that normally. story short. I mean, like, like basically, I'm like, you need to solve the orc problem. And then you guys did the rest. I did not direct... Like, you're like, how do we solve this orc problem? Well, you gotta find someone that knows how to solve the orc problem. Who can we go to that solves the orc problem? This person says that you could go here. Okay, we're going here, and we're talking to... The He's like, great. I'll, I'll tell you this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna require you to basically sell your life away to do it. And you're like, sure. Scrubs. I think I would like is more like a Fallout New Vegas style story where there like is a main quest that we should be following, but the time constraints are very relaxed. So if we decide we want to get distracted on hanging out in the town or starting a business or something like that. It's not massive, overarching consequences that ruin the world. But that's kind of best of both worlds, and that doesn't seem fair if, like, oh, there is this big overarching story we can follow, but there's no consequences if we don't. Well, yeah, see, see the problem that I have, and this is at least my feeling of it, is is, is in, in a game like Fallout... It's single-player, world... first of all. Yeah, the world revolves around you and solely yeah. you. And I have always built my worlds around the aspect of you are but a cog in the great machine of the world. If you Which die, like. the world will continue. Yeah. You know? And and I've obviously placed a lot more faith in your characters by having, like, the council integrate themselves into your storyline. And, and so, like, pe big players are playing around you and influencing you and po trying to pull you in different directions. But never do, do I... But, I mean, like, I, I really hate to sit there and be like, sure, you know that whole thing about, like, the dragons coming around in Skyrim? You know what? That cave over there. I'd really like to see what's in it and spend like the next like 